Last episode, we stopped right when the Pope revealed himself as the final boss, and the next two episodes are spent covering this epic fight with him. But given that episode 19 and 20 didn't cover much new material, this cut content is going to be a little bit shorter. Don't get me wrong though, there are several notable action sequences that weren't included in the anime. And I would have included episode 21 as well, but that one is pretty much a completely different story from what we were shown in the anime. So if you were going to watch any cut content episode, then that one would definitely be the one to watch next week. As for this episode, let's see how exactly the fight between the Pope and the four heroes should have actually played out. But first, this video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, one of the most ambitious RPG projects of 2019 that, while even on mobile, can still compete with both PC and console titles. Not to mention that it's also free and has a player base of almost 10 million people within its first three months. It's even got a near perfect score from over 200,000 reviews in the Play Store. Now, just as you'd expect from a quality RPG, it's got a captivating storyline, polished 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize, of which my personal favorite is now Foley because of his sleek assassin-like design. Personally though, I find the most fun with the PvP because I'm a huge fan of the competitive aspect of the arena. Anyway, the game is growing pretty quick, especially now that the new update is live, and there's the new player loyalty reward program, where you'll get a new daily login reward every day for 90 days. So go ahead and use the link in the description to download the game today, and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to get you started. Now, let's get back to the video. Episode 19, The Four Cardinal Heroes, covering chapter 28 from the manga and chapter 9 from volume 4 of the light novel. It's essentially a recap episode, but does progress the plot ever so slightly. We start off where the Pope had just revealed his cardinal weapon replica, and it seemed to be far more powerful than any of the originals. In fact, Naofumi believed it to be at least 15 times more powerful than Motiyasu's spear, potentially even more powerful given the impact of the previous attack. It was something that required numerous resources just to create, and it needed the mana of over 50 mages combined to use a single skill, meaning it wasn't something that could just be mass produced, or would even be practical in any fight other than the one that we see here. Because of this, the Pope knew he could only last so long in this situation, so he began to bombard his targets with high level spells like Bryonak. Once again, Naofumi's defenses barely held up, but he wasn't dead yet and he wasn't just going to sit around and keep waiting to be attacked. Neither was Motiyasu. They both attempted their own attacks, but the Pope's disciples would just run up and cast the spell Castle Wall to defend him. This was basically a wall of light that defended against all attacks and had the appearance of a fort. Now Fumi couldn't even tell how durable it was. He could only see that his attacks weren't getting through. So with all attempts at retaliation failing, everything seemed hopeless. Even the priest knew that victory was in his hands. He then bid the heroes goodbye and began to cast his final attack. Philo ran to Melty to protect her, while Raftalia tightly grasped Naofumi's hand. Motiyasu could only look on in defeat, and mine was screaming whatever words came into her head. Even the two adventurers in Motiyasu's party were hysterically sobbing. Now, the reason Naofumi and Raftalia weren't really panicking was because they both had faith that Naofumi could defend against this attack. Sure, he could defend his own party no problem, but defending the others who gave him so much trouble in the past, well, that would be a little bit harder. Raftalia didn't even try to tell him that he should. Just like how it was with her and the noble, this was Naofumi's choice to make. The root cause of all his problems was now standing before him, and the solution to it was only a few meters above him. All he had to do was nothing, and his problems would literally disappear in the next few seconds. But in the end, he bit the bullet and decided that he would protect them anyway. Now Fumi stepped up in front of everyone, readied his shield, and prepped himself for the oncoming attack. Then, right as the Pope raised his spear, a flurry of attacks struck his barrier all at once. It was Ren's hundred swords and Itsuki's shooting star bow skills. The Pope had no choice but to go on the defensive, and he cast Windmill Spear to block the attacks. When he turned to see where the attacks came from, he saw Ren, Itsuki, and their respective parties all alive. Turns out, the same shadows that were watching over Melty and Naofumi also saved Ren and Itsuki and helped them get to this battle quicker. This meant that the Queen and the Church weren't working together. Ren and Itsuki then jump into the pit to join Naofumi and Motiyasu, but with Ren being so close to the active Shield of Rage, Naofumi could barely keep it under control. The shield was screaming at Naofumi, 
and every second that Ren stood next to it just filled it with more and more rage. Going out of control now wouldn't have been the greatest idea, so he put some distance between himself and Ren in order to calm it down at least a little bit. Now, Ren and Itsuki had their party members bombard the priest with skills, but it seemed that his barrier would only grow the more times they attacked it. Ren then cast Thunder Sword, and Itsuki Thunder Shot, which combined was finally enough to break through. This was the opportunity that everyone needed, and without a word being said, everyone pounced at the chance to attack. Philo being the fastest dashed in the front, while Motoyasu and Ren rushed closely behind. Itsuki stood back and provided cover, while Raftalia stayed behind with Melty. The Pope took the brunt of each attack, but none quite seemed to face him. It's because his disciples were all behind him, and they were perpetually casting restoration magic to keep him at full health. Realizing that the source of the Pope's power was his disciples, Ren says that they should work together to focus them instead. So all the heroes, their party members, Raftalia, Philo, and even Melty, all went to engage the countless followers who were supporting the Pope. Now, you wouldn't expect them to be very capable fighters, but they were actually pretty damn strong. Each and every single one of them were ready to fight to the death, and that's what made them so powerful. Not to mention that just like with the Pope, if one follower was to get injured, then the others would try to heal them. It's not like now Fumi was afraid of killing them either. In fact, he wanted to. There was just too many of them to take on all at once. That's when now Fumi had the idea to activate his self-burning curse. At least that would be an AoE attack covering a fair bit of ground. So he gets Motoyasu to strike his shield, and redirects the curse towards the masses of followers, taking out quite a few as the dark flames engulfed many of them. Now, unlike the Pope who could withstand the curse's flames, his followers weren't as lucky. Ren and Itsuki also followed this up with an attack of their own, taking out a good number with their own ranged skills. Meanwhile, the priest was charging up his Bryonak attack again, and this time he wouldn't be interrupted. Unlike in the anime, where Naofumi simply blocks it by himself, it required the efforts of literally everyone who was there to counter this attack. They all preemptively hid behind Naofumi's shield. Then Ren, Itsuki, Motoyasu, and all of their party members simultaneously cast their most powerful magic attacks. Each one merged into the other, and it formed a massive beam of energy that would challenge the Popes. Two bright rays of light clashed with each other, neither giving way to the other, both seemingly of equal power, and it took all the hero's energy just to hold it steady until Bryonak dissipated. Afterward, it looked as if everywhere that Naofumi wasn't blocking was completely scorched and in rubble. Had he not defended everyone again, then there definitely would have been some casualties. But that was the extent of their combined power. No one had any SP left, and they were just barely matching the Pope's attacks. What all of them needed now was to recover with some soul healing water. But the Pope, well, he could just cast that skill again, and this time the heroes were in no shape to defend against it. When the priest began to charge up his next attack, all that the other heroes could think was that this was the end. They each had nothing left to use. I mean, they threw all that they had at him, and it all failed. However, Naofumi still hadn't exhausted all of his options yet. He could still unleash the Shield of Rage's power. So he calls Ren over, causing the shield to bubble up with rage. Then he looks over at Mine and Motoyasu, further triggering all sorts of emotions within himself. All this rage that he kept suppressed deeply within him was now coming to surface. All of a sudden, his vision went black and he could feel all that emotion being sent directly to the shield. The dragon-esque look that it used to have was now turning into something more demonic. Now Fumi had just unlocked the Shield of Wrath, and it was complete with a brand new equip bonus skill called Blood Sacrifice. He also noticed some new equip effects of Dark Curse Burning Physical, Roar of the Raging Dragon, Frenzy of Companions, and Magic Share and Robes of Rage. Now, sure, now Fumi had all this new strength, but he was completely lost in his own hatred. I mean, it took the warmth of all the girls to bring him back in control. Even Ren stood by his side with his hand rested on his shoulder, and it was because of them and their belief in him that he didn't get swallowed up by his hatred. So with now Fumi essentially leveled up, he was now ready to put his new strength and skills to the test. He found that he could easily deflect some of the Pope's direct attacks, and just as we saw in the anime, he used his magic sharing robes of rage to activate a shared skill with Philo, Wrathfire which turned the Pope's Phoenix Blade back against him. But even with all of that, the Pope was still able to fight back, and he even backed them into another corner with his Mirage Arrow skill. That's when the Queen made her entrance, and she used all Drite Icicle Prison to momentarily encapsulate the Pope in ice, giving now Fumi the opportunity to use Blood Sacrifice. 
After blood spilled out from every pore in his body, a device that looked like a twisted version of a bear trap sprung from the ground. But given the number of rows of teeth it had, now Fumi could sort of see that this was something more dragon-like. It was as if a dragon had just opened its mouth. I mean, it made sense since the chant literally involved the words dragon jaws. And it was these jaws that began to snap. Once, twice, even a third time. And every time it snapped, the priest was impaled by numerous sets of fangs. But it wasn't enough to actually kill him since he was still holding the inner set of teeth apart with his weapon. Even so, you could hear him screaming in agony as his body began to turn into a bloody clump. And when it came time for the teeth to snap a fourth time, that's when his weapon broke. The entire trap then closed completely, and it sunk back down into the earth. No one could believe what they had just witnessed, and there was complete silence following it. But everyone was now certain that the fight was over. Now Fumi was heavily injured, which is why when the queen came over to the rest of them, she gave a royal order to make treating the shield hero's wounds their highest priority. She then took mine into custody and sent her back to the kingdom separately. Now, now Fumi couldn't just pass out yet. He still wasn't sure if the queen was a friend or foe since this was technically his first time meeting her. His deeply rooted trust issues still wouldn't allow him to simply see her as an ally. One good deed wasn't enough to sway his opinion. So he told Raftalia that if something was to happen to him, then she had to immediately take Philo and Melty and run away. Raftalia could only agree. Then shortly after, now Fumi fell into a deep sleep. Which brings us to the end of episode 20, and to the end of this cut content. I know it's a bit shorter than usual, but I promise I'll make it up to you with the next episode. Anyway, before I go, feel free to check out my new Danmachi or Arifurita cut content series. Links will be in the description. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!